One of the key areas of this meeting and the roundtable today is financial surveillance. When we're talking about blockchain and crypto, what do you think is needed in financial surveillance? And I think a lot of people are wondering, would that help the price action? Would it help reduce the volatility? What will financial surveillance do for the industry? Well, I think the key is actually a discussion more as why we shouldn't have financial surveillance. You know, this discussion was really driven by, you know, Commissioner Peirce, who leads the SEC's Crypto Asset Task Force. And she's raised the question of why is a lack of privacy the default in all of our financial transactions as Americans? Uh, obviously, we have anti-money laundering, know your client, that all financial institutions off-chain uh, traditional financial services have to do. Uh, when transactions move on chain, and we're seeing that more and more, we're going to see that more and more with everything being tokenized, including one day potentially our equity markets. The question is, is that transparency necessarily a good thing? And how do we actually create more privacy for Americans as a default? Well, let me ask you, where do you stand when it comes to this? Because financial surveillance, it is about uh, catching money laundering and illegal activity, but it's also about compliance and regulations and things like that. Uh, where do you stand when it comes to this argument? And especially if we're going to tokenize our equity markets, don't we need as much transparency as we can get? It's a great question. I think it's a critical time to be discussing this because there's kind of three separate issues. You know, one is privacy is a fundamental right. Uh, two, privacy as an economic need as markets move on chain. And three, privacy technology as a mechanism to ensure that, you know, Americans have the ability to control their own data and mitigate the epidemic of data breaches. And what's absolutely exciting vis-a-vis -vis the regulatory issues and the compliance question is really opening up a discussion to say that privacy shouldn't necessarily be assumed to be a bad thing. And also there's privacy technology like zero knowledge proofs, which is what my company develops, that creates a mechanism to ensure compliance while also maintaining privacy and avoiding creating more honeypots of personally identifiable information that one day will likely be breached. Okay, so if we're concerned about a potential breach, let me ask you this. Why are we having these meetings when I think the general consensus is that one day AI is going to create uh, the ability for us to monitor just about everything? If not, quantum computing seems to be coming down the line, and that supposedly is going to break down any cryptography that's related to blockchain or anything else, or at least have the potential to do so. We know these emerging technologies are coming up. Why can't we just wait for them to solve some of these problems or figure out what problems that they actually may create? Uh, that's actually kind of a scary prospect. I mean, you put it well. We are looking at a rise in AI activity, AI agents, uh, surveillance uh, through that technology. So at the same time, we need to consider emerging technology as a threat to privacy and raise privacy technology to mitigate that threat. And quantum computing, that's always a bit of a specter over everything right now, including Bitcoin, blockchain technology. But what's really exciting is you also have existing technology like zero knowledge proof Starks, ZK Starks, that's actually post quantum resistant. So a lot of this cryptography technology, like the technology my company works on, is post quantum resistant. It can actually be used to address some of the issues with agentic activity, um, some of the, the quantum threat. And it's important that cryptography be at the forefront of this conversation because it's some of the most sophisticated technology that exists right now.